Uh, it's one of our sponsors, who's Mentor Graphics, and the speaker is Adam Rose, who's the Product Marketing Manager and Verification. Um, Adam is the Marketing Manager for Quest of Verification IP, who is the author of the System CTLM 1.0 and the main technical contributor to the Advanced Verification Methodology, AVM, which is the first open source system Verilog, ver system Verilog verification methodology. He also managed a team that developed the UVM cookbook on the Verification Academy, and he went on to lead Mentor's VIP engineering team before moving into his current role. And the title of Mark's, uh, Adam's talk is Test Bench Automation. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, uh, as, uh, uh, as Mike said, um, I'm doing a pre presentation on Test Bench Automation. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Quest of Verification IP. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about Quest of Verification IP, but I'll also be talking about some other technologies and a combined flow which, which together um, form our test bench automation solution. Um, so I'm not sure when this was, but about 15 years ago, um, uh, the industry started changing over to um, system Verilog, to constrained randomization, to coverage, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and if you think about what the promises were, well, um, the first promise um, that everyone was talking about then and has been talking about ever since then is reuse. Um, kind of two kinds of reuse. The first is from project to project, uh, and the second is within a project from block level to system level. Um, the other promise that uh, we talked about all those years ago was to do with coverage and verification management. Um, so we would introduce... Um, we would introduce project. Uh, we would introduce metrics, basically, to see to so that we could measure how how far we were through the verification process, uh, and then we would know that we were or were not done, or what percentage done we were. Uh, and the other promise um, that uh, was made by and on behalf of the industry then um, was about constrained randomization, uh, and really uh, the critique of directed testing. Um, directed testing uh, was okay, but it wouldn't find the un unpredictable things. And therefore, you needed constram constrained randomization um, to find the to find the, prob the unknown unknowns, if you like. Uh, so they were the promises 15 years ago. Um, so what has been happening since then to the numbers of verification and design engineers in a project? Um, well, so this is for ASICs, by the way. I have got some slides uh, in a while about what's going on um, uh, with the similar trends in FPGAs. Um, but um, the, the overwhelming trend is that, for, to start with, the, number, the average number of people on your average ASIC is going up. Um, it's been going up um, you know, for, well, for a decade, really. Uh, but the other, the other trend is that the... Um, the rate at which the um, design engineers are going up is relatively steady and sedate, whereas the um, number, average number of verification engineers uh, in an average ASIC project is going up quite rapidly. It's 10% a year. You know. um, and, uh, sorry. and for the first time in, it was in 2014, a few years ago, um, for the first time the average number of verification engineers um, exceeded the number of um, design engineers. Um, uh, um, uh, and actually this trend shows no particular so sign of stopping. Um, uh, so here's the, the same data with some trend, with some trend lines uh, added. Uh, so we, for whatever reason, the level of productivity, the level of reuse all these kinds of things have clearly had more effect on the design world than on the verification world. Um, here's the, the uh, similar data I um, promised you earlier um, for FPGAs. It's essentially the same trend. Um, obviously, for FPGAs, the average number of engineers in total is lower than for ASICs. Um, and um, so far, at least, when it comes to FPGAs, the number of verification verification engineers has so far not exceeded the number of design engineers. Um, you could argue that's a bad thing. You could argue that actually what's going on is that still there's a lot of verification uh, 
um, going on in the lab and that this is actually quite inefficient. Um, but nevertheless, but it's still the same, it's the same essential trend is happening. We have only got data that goes back a few years. Um, but the same essential trend is happening for FPGAs as, it's ha as, as, as is in place for ASICs. Um, so why are we spending all this time and money on verification? Why is the effort we're putting into verification um, growing disproportionately in relation to design? Um, so one, um, uh, one reason for this is just simply the complexity of methodology. Uh, so in my introduction it talked about um, uh, my responsibility for these crimes, um, the, the, the TLM and the AVM and the UVM. But there has been an explosion in um, the complexity of those methodologies. The AVM, when it was first released uh, in 2006, uh, gosh, more than 10 years ago, it had 6,000 lines of code. Um, the UVM in 2016 had 75,000 lines of code. I suspect it's actually growing. Uh, it's still growing, I would imagine. So the UVM has, de has delivered all sorts of advantages. It has developed a single and consistent industry-wide um, methodology. It does deliver uh, reuse. It has enabled uh, a standard way um, to, de to deliver and exchange verification IP. Um, but because of its complexity, it is hard to get up and running. Uh, and that, that's one reason um, for this growth in um, the number of people doing verification. Uh, another reason I would uh, suggest is actually um, the complexity of verification IP. Uh, now, I'm product man marketing manager for the verification IP for mental graphics, so you could blame me if you want. But actually, the, I would say the underlying reason is that um, protocols are just getting more, more complicated. You know, they're deep, complicated stacks, they're serial protocols, FIs, all that kind of thing. And so the, just the, the, the complexity of um, the protocols means that the verification IP itself is quite complicated. It's, it's hard to instantiate, configure, and bring up. Um, the third issue that I think uh, is um, contributing to this is constrained, rand constrained randomization is a bit dumb. It repeats the same guess at what might be the wrong thing uh, many, many times before it finally gets to the thing which it really is the wrong thing. Um, uh, so um, this actually uses a lot of, um, it, a lot of compute resource um, uh, to achieve, achieve the coverage. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of the time there's sort of various ways of trading off constrained random and directed test and, you know, do you have very unconstrained or quite tightly constrained and all, that, all, those, kinds of, all those kinds of dilemmas. So this is, uh, this is why I think you have this rising curve of um, numbers of people involved in verification. Um, so now we did try and tame the beast. Um, uh, this is why we did the, the UVM cookbook. Um, uh, I think the UVM cookbook has been very successful in many ways. It's the go-to go, the go-to resource for um, uh, verification methodology nowadays. Um, I noticed that I talked earlier to um, John Ainsley from Doulos. You know, there's, um, the, um, we're by no means not the only people that are making this effort to um, simplify and codify and um, uh, make the easy the, the UVM easier to use. Uh, so we released the UVM cookbook, but, uh, and there were all sorts of other efforts to do the same kind of thing, uh, to tame and to tame the UVM. Uh, but while it did have an effect, it didn't work completely. The number of verification engineers is still increasing faster than the number of design engineers in your average project. Uh, so um, our solution to this is test bench automation. Um, so there are these three issues, there's the complexity of the UVM, there's the complexity of the verification IP, and there's the issue of uh, inefficient stimulus. Um, and test bench automation allows you, um, uh, well essentially it's a combined flow which addresses all these different things. Uh, so the first thing with um, UVM complexity, um, somehow or other we need to automate the generation of um, UVM test benches. Uh, and in order to do this, um, we introduced the UVM framework, which is essentially um, a way of rapidly generating your UVM infrastructure so that you don't have to write all that stuff yourself. 
Um, so that, that's how we uh, address the, uh, the, the complexity of UVM. We need to do the same thing really on the verification IP side. Um, we need to somehow automate the generation and the instantiation and configuration and bring up of verification IP. Um, so we have some software called the uh, Quest of Verification IP Configurator. Uh, and what, the, what this does, essentially, um, it's, a, uh, it's a relatively simple, easy to use GUI. You just say, um, I've got this, this interface here, it's got these connections, it's got this configuration, you press a button, and out comes the test bench. And so the, the, the combine, these two combines, I'll talk about it a bit later, but these two combines enable you to get up and running with your test bench very quickly. Um, to address the uh, issue of stimulus, you need some sort of intelligent stimulus. Um, you still need the essential randomness, because otherwise you will never get to the unknown unknowns. But um, you need to find some way of introducing your understanding of how your design works um, in a way which is not a simple directed test. Um, so this is what intelligent stimulus is. Um, the technology we have uh, is, uh, in fact, portable stimulus um, as part of the standardization effort for portable stimulus. Um, we made a, a Mental Graphics has made a, um, a sort of very important contribution to the development of that standard. Um, but the, the basic idea here is that you combine the intelligence that, or the knowledge you have of the design around um, uh, the, the you have of the design with the um, uh, exhaustive, uh, exhaustive examination of every possibility within that legal set of sp uh, spaces. And therefore, you, you get the best of directed testing and you get the best of constrained randomization. So this, this together is a combined flow which we call test bench automation. It's based on our wider enterprise verification platform, which includes um, uh, simulation, emulation, prototyping, and, and formal. And basically, test bench automation allows you to start your work earlier. You start your productive work earlier. It allows the work you need to do to be more productive uh, and it either enables you to finish earlier or to be more productive um, or, or actually simply to do more testing um, uh, because you were able to um, start earlier and do more intelligent things. Um, so here's the, if you, here's the way that test bench automation enables you to get up and running more quickly. So I mentioned earlier there's UVMF in configurator. Uh, UVMF uh, is really most helpful for those interfaces where you, uh, it's not a standard interface. So there's no, verif there's no commercially available verification IP for this interface. So that's where UVMF helps. Uh, and Qubit Configurator generates the test bench for the standard interfaces. And together, these just allow you to get up and running, get up and running um, much more quickly than you would have been able to otherwise. Um, the uh, the uh, intelligent stimulus with, um, in fact, uh, the portable stimulus, um, as I was saying, it, it combines the strengths of directed and random testing. It supports the portable stimulus standard. And um, we have what we call graph kits, which is essentially integration between portable stimulus and verification IP available for our um, quest to verification IP. And this means not only c can you get up and running more quickly, but you can either um, finish earlier or you can simply do more tests and achieve a higher level of quality. Uh, so what are the benefits from a sort of business point of view of this uh, flow and these technologies? Well, the benefits are, first of all, for, for new UVM users, for people who are new to UVM, it reduces the ramp up time. But importantly, it reduces the risks to your project. And it also means that you have a much faster payback from adopting these new uh, advanced verification technologies. Um, for experienced UVM users, well, still, I think the ramp-up time matters to whether you're experienced or not with UVM. But it maximizes your productivity, particularly the portable stimulus, the intelligent stimulus. It maximizes your productivity both in relation to productivity per person, because your stimulus is more efficient, but also in terms of your use of computing resource. Um, so these are the benefits for um, the more experienced UVM users. So... Um, Anyway, this, this is it, test bench automation. Uh, it integrates UVM, the, UVMF frame, the UVM framework, the uh, verification IP, 
and the portable stimulus flow. It's an integrated environment um, where all three of these things work together, but if you only want to use one of them or some pair of them, that all those work together um, as well. Uh, and it has a lot of uh, important benefits for um, new UVM customers and also for experienced UVM users. So, thank you.